Well, we talked about ragtime in another one of these sequences, and ragtime was a straight two-beat feel to it. One and two and one and two, and based on the march. Now, New Orleans music, which is what we generally consider was the, the basis of, of our whole jazz tradition, uh, did something different with that. And I think the guy who may have been largely responsible for really getting it out there is, is, is sort of underrated, and his name is Jelly Roll Morton. And Jelly Roll Morton claimed that he invented jazz. He, he has, I think he did, said he did it in 1904, maybe, or something like that. But he was a, he was a Creole piano player, and he was uh, born in New Orleans around 1885. And he started playing in the Red Light District there, which was called Storyville. And incidentally, that was the only Red Light District that was quasi-legal in the, in the United States. It was the most famous one. Uh, 16 square blocks in, in New Orleans where they had uh, all of these famous houses of ill repute. The very expensive ones were on the Basin Street. And then they had uh, many more of, of varying uh, degrees of, of uh, exotic uh, uh, decadence, and uh, including. And then they had the cheaper ones. They had the cribs and the, and the girls working the streets. They must. They had, I believe, something like 2,500 women working there uh, at the height of it. Now Storyville existed, and I'm going a little bit off the track here, but Storyville existed from uh, 18. 97 to about 1917, which is the period that we consider really the, the ragtime era. And in 1917, when America went to war, they discovered that uh, many of the people out there were trying to conscript to go fight. Uh, the majority of them had some form of venereal disease, so they, uh, they decided to shut down the houses of ill repute that were in a certain range of naval bases and army bases and whatnot. So. Uh, Storyville basically got shut down at that time. But Jelly Roll Morton and many other great piano players uh, were working in these houses. Uh, the, the most famous one is Lulu White's, that you've probably heard about, Mahogany Hall. Uh, but Jelly Roll played in them and made very good money doing that. These piano players had to play everything, had to play whatever pieces of music were popular. Uh, in the day, so they played the hits that came from Tin Pan Alley. They also uh, had to play operatic pieces. And, you know, whatever any customer would want to hear, they would have to play it. So Jelly Roll did that and learned all this stuff. And then New Orleans had, a, had an interesting mix of so many different cultures. Uh, you had French culture, you had Latin American, uh, you had the, the German traditions, not to mention the African traditions and all the things that were coming from South America and Cuba and all that sort of stuff. So it came, it, it came together and the music was mixed. And Jelly Roll Morton started hearing uh, what the bands were doing. And the bands, instead of, and, and, and instead of uh, playing in two beat, they, might, they would play four beat. And Jelly Roll Morton made note of this, and he said, uh, he said he's the first one who came up with this. I, I, whether he did or not, I don't know. But in, instead of playing, and those, my foot, I'm tapping in two, one and two, and he would play one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. He'd tap his foot in, in four beat rather than two beat. And four beat becomes the sort of the essence uh, of, of uh, of New Orleans jazz and what Jelly Roll Morton did and a kind of a feel that, that came later. Now Jelly Roll Morton's idea on the piano was that he would imitate a band. And so when you hear Jelly Roll playing his music, he has the trumpet part in the lead, and then he also has a harmony which with, would have been played by a clarinet, say. And then he also had a, a trombone part. So very often in Jelly Roll's music, you would hear a, a line that's around middle C here, and it would be a, a it would be a counter melody. So you hear often in Jelly Roll's playing, he's putting these little, little things in right right in here. And of course, he's getting the tuba part or the string bass part, which may even when he was playing in two beat, would still have a feel of four beat. 
going to get one of his pieces of music. So basically, he said he was his whole idea was to imitate the, a band. Now the other idea that he had about bands and playing on the piano, he also talked about the idea of breaks. And he thought the idea of breaks was very important. So if you're playing along... Uh, that break in there where one instrument or two instru instruments would, would would take a break so uh, let's get one of his uh, his tunes here's here's the pearls uh, and especially in the, the last section of it when we go into seagull here it goes right into a very serious four beat thing that Jelly Roll Morton did. He always thought it was important to have a, well, what would you call it, a Latin feel. And you find the, the Latin feel actually comes from, uh, well, a lot of different sources. And it was even in the, in the maple leaf rag, 
when we had uh, uh, let's take the the second section of the maple leaf rag. It was. You can play that with a Latin fin. Da 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 da. So uh, Jelly Roll thought that, that that should be in in all jazz, and his first piece of music uh, was a blues that was with with a Latin feel, and it's an amazing piece of, piece of music. Here, here's the New Orleans Joys. Latin American feel.